hello everybody uh, this is somya from petfed uh, your host for today as well um, as promised uh, today we have dr pawan kumar from cessna lifeline veterinary hospital uh, which is one of the biggest uh, multi speciality multi speciality animal hospital in bangalore hi dr pawan welcome to the live chat hello good evening to all of you good evening to you too uh, dr pawan uh, we will be discussing uh, so for the audience uh, we will be discussing a whole lot about our pets health and well being and uh, you know some commonly encountered uh, health issues that we face at our home with our pets and uh, dr pawan will be answering all those queries uh, uh, that you guys may have so um, dr pawan started uh, cessna lifeline uh, veterinary care clinic uh, in 2005 that's right that's right yes and uh, he is known to be one of the top veterinary surgeons in india uh, dr pawan uh, would you like to tell us something about your entire journey of uh, more than 15 years Uh, in the uh, industry as uh, a veterinarian, and how uh, you know what was that one moment in your life where you uh, where it just hit you? You decided that you know you want to do something like this for the rest of your life. Okay, so thank you so much, Petra, to give me for giving me this opportunity here to talk to everyone, and it's really a pleasure that I can answer a few things if it is uh, going to help them. and as far as my journey is concerned i am a veterinarian today and this is uh i was kind of never thought that i'll be at this stage and uh, the very important when i joined veterinary college when i was doing my graduations to do one kind of study then we have to it study anatomy and for that we have to basically study on buffalo cows and it happens so that during that time that we have to sacrifice four buffalo cows and uh, and that became a turning point for my career and my life that you know because we had to those animals actually sacrifice their life for us and that was the, you know after that day then it became really difficult for me for few nights i was not able to sleep that you know those animals died because of us and then we decided and i decided particularly that before i pass out i will save we have probably killed four animals and before i pass out we'll be going to save more than 40 animals so by doing this when i started treating lots of cows and buffaloes on street and roads and wherever i was getting it with whatever knowledge i had and joined veterinary college very early in the sense clinic normally start at the fourth year or fifth year but i started going for treatment in the second year itself and then slowly slowly that became a passion and uh, you know then i didn't look back and then it became a motto and then it became a target and i think now it's a mission that we revolutionize veterinary practice in india so Uh, then i did my graduation from uh, haryana then i did my masters from bangalore as a junior research fellowship and then i started my career as a small animal clinic with a small clinic of 120 square feet uh, with one employee that is me then one employee became five and five became 20 and 20 became 100 and 100 now we are more over 100 we had one small clinic then it became three bedroom house hospital then it became five floor hospital and then now we have hospitals in five different parts of city country sorry actually so and we are probably thinking about large animal practice in future as well so that's how our journey and we have some a new projects in pipeline thank you that, that's very impressive dr pawan thank you so much for sharing that with us um also is uh, is there a special memory that you have uh, while you were treating a pet uh you know whether it's a special memory with that particular pet or their pet parent or any such special scenario that you would like to share with the audience uh so so when you when you come in veterinary practice there are lots of that kind of situations are there which you know kind of we come across and there are lots of that kind of incidents comes where you know so everything becomes a memory and uh, when probably i will tell you that you know so the one uh, one is simple example there is one dog one lady used to look after many dogs and uh, many stray dogs so then one dog that that used to be so good actually that you know that she used to kind of understand everything and uh, you know kind of she she was so vocal and she was like very communicative and uh, i think Uh, the dog became then dog had a kidney failure then i have to because that that is many years before that time we were not doing it 
kind of any kind of dialysis or something and that was the first talk when because i was feeling very bad for the dog that because the dog as kind of one was inspiring to me it was a kind of cross breed dog and the lady was a kind of volunteer and she used to look after lots of stray dogs and all those so then we started dialysis first in the dog then we started blood transfusion that is many years before then people were not even thinking about dialysis another thing so the dog name was sesna actually and uh, so the dog inspired me a lot but though she passed away after whatever we can so i'm just telling you like this we have so many so like this kind of stories every dog every pow which comes in the clinic that inspires us they have a different kind of feeling the different kind of thinking they gives and they inspires us for lots of things i think it's worth doing yes totally very yeah. impressive when you named uh, your uh, hospital chain uh, after the dog that's very very uh, yeah. nice you know it's very hard feeling so um, you know now let's start with what we really here are for dr pawan is that uh, to discuss about uh, you know our pets health and wellness and well being and uh, for audience who joined us now um, uh, you just need to drop in your uh, queries in the comment section below as you can see on the post and uh, we'll be answering them for you uh, we already have a couple of questions uh, coming in dr pawan so let's uh, start with those um Bhaskar uh, asks that um, there's a stray cat uh, near his house. It has some black liquid, like which leaks near his eyes and nose. Does it need a vet's attention? Okay, so if it is something kind of black stuff which is coming around the eyes and uh, nose, it can be just a dirt also, you know, which is quite possible because if the area where the cat is staying, if it is very dusty, so. lots of secretion and this black pigment keep accumulating it as long as that cat is otherwise eating well playing well active and there's not any redness of eye and there's not too much of yellow discharge from the nose and then it can be just a kind of uh, which is more of dust accumulation which body try to kind of gather at one place and accumulate so most probably if animal has other all normal sign then this is not to worry and then you can just clean it regularly and ensure that this cat particular cat goes in a kind of dust free area and if you can or you can adopt it that could be the best thing but if this cat is having sneezing sign there is a more discharge from the eyes and redness of eye it's quite highly possible there are lots of viral disease comes in the cat i would request you better get it checked by your vet for that so that's how i can probably advise you for this case uh thank you so much uh, bhaskar for asking this question if you have a follow up question to uh, this uh, you can uh, you know post it again um there is uh, before we move on to other questions uh, dr pawan i have a question from you so uh, you know, hands on one of the most uh, important and most common query and a real mystery to all pet parents is that why do their pets itch and scratch so much you know so um, cuz i think it just goes beyond bathing and grooming like i mean i'm sure like a lot of pet parents are already taking care of the bathing and the grooming bit of the pet but yet they face this problem with their pets a lot uh, i personally face that with my pet a lot so can you um, you know throw light on what are the possible reasons and what are the possible causes or is it just fine if you know how much of it is fine if uh, they are itching or scratching and how much is it that we need to be worried about for the same okay so when we talk about the itching part actually uh, there is a very most common disease which is all over the world and animals are having particularly dogs when i'm talking which is less seen cats that is known as the atopic dermatitis and that is quite a common allergy which comes from the environment or it can be from the food or other contacts also and because of that animal can start itching sometime it can become so bad that they start biting themselves sometime even ears can get involved and they can get infected and then they keep coming to the hospital every one month or two weeks or something so those are serious atopic dermatitis cases and atopic dermatitis is number one skin disease which is all over the world so there is one thing which is possible i think the veterinarian should kind of involve and he should diagnose is it atopic dermatitis or not because itching is a symptom and so this you like in a medical term we call it is pruritis so it's a symptom and but this can happen because of multiple disease one of them is atopic dermatitis which i told you the most common second it can happen because of mites also which are like mites which are microscopic parasite that also can cause it 
uh, one skin scraping test can be done and they can rule out by that third this can happen because of fleas also like many animals can have flea allergy and flea allergic dermatitis so that also can cause that and apart from that there are some systemic diseases as well which can bring like drug reactions and all those can also bring the itching part and uh, how i probably like now for example when animal is like a little bit of ear he's scratching once in a while he is kind of uh, trying to bite his or lick his uh, paws or skin then it is normal but if he's doing i'm just in general i'm telling you like in simple way if he's doing more than five to ten times per day then i think he needs some kind of attention but if one time or two times he's doing then it's normal because sometime out of boredom also they start doing this kind of sign and which is quite possible but if he's doing more than five ten times then I think it's a medical concern, then you should do it. Uh, simple thing I can advise you, keep him flea free, ensure using the, some spot on or those kind of thing, groom him nicely, brush him nicely. And if you find some skin lesion, and redness or something, better get it checked by your veterinarian for that part. Right, okay. So uh, that brings me to the next, like uh, the continuation of this. Uh, you pointed out that, you know, uh, they can be flea free. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of pet parents think that um, you know ticks and fleas are just uh, like a part of life of the pet or you know the pet parent and we just have to kind of deal with it uh, is it true or is it just a myth or our dogs or our pets can actually be completely tick and flea free uh, you know if that's the case then how do we get rid of ticks and fleas which is like one of the most common things that we find in our pets yeah i think it's a good question and this come across many times during our uh, grooming center also so see when we talk about the ticks actually so tick alone treating of animal for the ticks is not going to help you need to treat the animal or pet as well as the environment both together so you need to treat your house and surrounding and animal together because alone treating the dog is not going to help and you need to do the treatment for both the things together because in a simple way, if I tell you one particular tick, it can multiply and in a week time, it becomes millions actually that, you know, they lay eggs so much and those eggs will go into the lar like in your cracks and corner in your house. And those will become larva and pupa and again will become sticks and come to your dog bag. So even if you have made your dog tick free, for example, by giving the shampoo bath or whatever you're using, after one week, you will find that, you know, there, again, a new population of ticks are coming back and it's infesting, you know, a kind of animal. So in that case, you will not be basically able to kind of get the response what you're looking for that part. So treating of uh, treating of your dog and treating your house becomes very important. Using that some kind of solutions coming, like there are so many solutions commercially available, you can use for your house as a mop or spray, which can kind of disinfest your house. And for the dog, for animals, and there are like spot on, there's one tablet also which is available. And apart from that, there's some spray like fipronil based sprays are there which can be used. And yes, animal can be made tick free actually. So it's you can make them, if you treat them well, then they can be absolutely lifelong tick free also if you take care of them well. It is not a part of normal life for sure. Not a part of it. that. That clears a lot of uh, queries that people have. So it's not just the pet that you need to uh, be made completely tick free, but it's also the environment, basically your house where you, where the pet is very, yes, very, very uh, interesting. Uh, we have more questions. Uh, let's take up more questions. Uh, Pranita, Pranita says that uh, her baby is three years old, Shizu. Since a week, he has been extremely lethargic. It's only one time in a day. Does not even play. I checked if he has a fever. He doesn't. He's lately got many fleas. Uh, can you please suggest why he's behaving in such a way? Okay. So first thing, because he has a shit Jew and uh, because if this is a young dog, like I think it's a three years, what she has mentioned by nature, shit Jew breed is a, otherwise also a first C breed. I'm just telling that like there's a different breed has different nature of eating. When you talk about Pomeranian or shit Jew or these Maltese, so they eat only that much they can stay alive actually this is their nature normally and labrador is like that when you think they will be keep eating till you know they vomit out actually so the different breed has a different kind of eating pattern now in this particular case if he's otherwise active playful and if he's not uh, kind of uh, you know kind of having any vomiting or coughing and diarrhea but he's eating less or he's eating only once in a day then it is normal then you don't need to really worry for that part but if he's not eating he's weak and lethargy 
and uh, a fever is not a very important sign which you need to just think if he's dull and if he's not eating then there can be serious medical concern then i would request you better take to the veterinarian and get it checked there can be so many diseases he can be carrying and if he has a fleas flea can bring a flea allergic dermatitis and that can make animal really very weak and uh, annoyed actually that and sometimes it can keep him all the time busy with scratching and all things and he can really get tired with that part so if there is a flea then please get the flea treatment done that by giving a good medicated bath using those spot on or using some fibrinol based spray and that you can eradicate the fleas and if he has infection with the because of fleas then it is better treat by antibiotic but i think the best person who can help you is a veterinarian and should consult with the veterinarian for that part but what you mentioned is that he is lethargic and he is eats only one time in a day but if he is lethargic and eating less then i think you should get him checked but if he is active and eating once in a day then it's normal not to worry okay great um so you know in your answer you talked about um uh, vomiting and diet other uh, you know dietary issues also uh you know uh, again one of the queries that we encounter come across a lot is that uh and something that i have also faced is that you know uh one moment my pet will be extremely well and healthy and playing and active and uh, the other moment you know they uh, start vomiting um you know what to do when pets vomit uh, how to take care of that at home and again like when do we realize that when, when do we know that it's serious and it needs to be we need to rush into the vet or when is it that we can actually take care of that at home itself okay so uh one thing is being as i told you about the scratching vomiting is also a sign of you know multiple disease sometime animal has overeaten and they have vomited out so that's a normal finding uh second thing can happens when animal is probably has really played too much so they can get over exerted and they can vomit out vomiting can happen in the kidney failure vomiting can happen in poisoning vomiting can happen in the liver disease vomiting can happen in cancer vomiting can happen in so many tick borne disease leptospirosis and everything so vomiting is is like a one common symptom but uh, in general how where they need to be i can probably advise you in this way where they need to be alarmed and where they are comfortable i can tell that you see if animal has vomited like many dogs and cats they vomit once in two weeks or three weeks and that is normal that you don't need to worry as long as they have appetite and they're active and playful they are eating and pooping normal so then you don't need to worry that can be normal vomiting sometime and the same thing can happen with the cats also because cat by nature they keep licking their fur they keep grooming themselves and lots of hair ball can go inside and they can vomit out once in two weeks or three weeks or once in a month and that's a normal vomiting that they really don't need to worry second vomiting which i'm telling sometime other things they need to is like dog has vomited but and he is active he is playful he has normal uh, urinations normal uh, kind of stools and everything is normal and you offered him food after one hour and then he has eaten food again and if he is not rejecting and if he is still active and eating food then you don't need to worry it means it was more of indigestion and he is okay but if vomiting happened one time it is okay but if vomiting happened two time then you need to really think but if his vomiting is more than two times you should speak to your veterinarian but till one time you don't need to worry too much but if okay. vomiting is associated with the dullness then whether it is one vomiting you should talk to your veterinarian because if vomiting is only one time or two time but he is active playful having interest in the food you don't need to worry too much so i can just give you a kind of vague and broad criteria which can differentiate about that part yeah i think that's very necessary because uh, a lot of times people just don't uh, are not able to figure that out um there are uh, a lot many other questions dr pawan let's start taking them um anup says evening guys this is a great report by petfred my pet is a regular to cessna domlur uh thanks anup and uh, i think dr pawan would also like to say that uh, dr pawan my spitz is 3 years old and he sheds her hair throughout the year she's not having any skin condition is this normal how can we reduce her hair shed okay okay thank you so much for being a client for sesna and anyway that if your uh, if your pet is uh, what i can see is you're talking about that he's a spit so he's a hairy breed first thing is probably there are three things if the dog otherwise doesn't have a skin problem and if he's shedding hair normally so first thing you know any pet owner has to realize that dogs are like that they shed hair all the life actually they're unlike us because we have a different kind of hair structure and anatomy 
and dogs has a different structure and anatomy. They keep shedding and the new hair keep coming. They are unlike us. We lose hair once and it never comes back. So they, you know, they keep losing hair and it keep coming back. Then there are some seasons comes when the hair fall is too much. So they are like molting time. And these all are controlled by one hormone, melatonin hormone, which is controlled by uh, the pituitary gland and, you know, kind of brain actually there's a part of, you know, kind of gland which secretes that hormone that. Now, if the dog is really shedding too much, then it can be pathological or it can be imbalance of that melatonin hormone. But if the dog is normal shedding is happening and he's eating, his coat is shining, then it is a normal shedding. What probably they need to do is the brushing is the most important thing. Take the dog to one area which is you feel uh, is a little kind of away from your normal home and then nicely brush him. Remove all the dead hair because new hair will come back. So the brushing is one very important thing which will reduce the hair fall, which will make animal better. He will feel comfortable and plus shedding of hair will go down at home. So I think the first thing which will more than grooming which I will advo advocate is that you should focus on brushing. And another common reason for hair fall can be deficiency of omega fatty acid, particularly in the kind of cat which are long hair cat or in the breed like sh the Shih Tzu or uh, Spitz or Lassaps or those because they need much more omega fatty acid. So sometimes deficiency of omega fatty acid also can cause uh, hair fall too much. So I probably will advise you that in case uh, this particular Spitz is kind of uh, having too much hair shedding. It is always better that you can start adding some omega fatty acid supplement. So many are commercially available, so you can procure from anywhere. And normally this syrup comes in the form of syrup. Normally 0.5 ml per kg body weight we advise that can be given. So you can continue this even lifelong also. But brushing stays most important. If the brushing can be done, I think, and uh, that can take care of hair fall and other things. But if there's too much hair fall, I think it needs that hormone supplementation. But I think for that, she should get it checked sometime whenever it is possible. And that's something we'll advise in this case. Uh, all right. Uh, I hope I hope you uh, heard that. Um, uh, we have another query from uh, Rithik. Uh, Rithik is a little worried about his uh, two months old puppy uh, who he got just four days ago and uh, is pooping only once a day since the time he got him. So, um, you know, is it normal? Is it something he needs to worry about? Okay. So, ideally, if it is a two-month-old puppy and he's pooping only once in a day, yes, it's a area of little concern. Ideally, as many times he eat, so many times he should pass the poop, actually. That. So, like four meals per day he's giving, so ideally he should do four-time meal. But I think in this case, there could be two reasons. One, the diet what he's giving is not a balanced diet. Second reason, other could be that, that water intake what this puppy is having, he's not having enough water intake. Many times I've seen the client, they don't give water. I don't know for what reason they say that, you know, breeder told not to give water. So I hope he's not the same situation. So please ensure that you should have available water for this puppy all the time because dehydration can make constipation and it can reduce the uh, kind of uh, stool output. So in this particular case, if he's otherwise active, playful, I think you should uh, introduce some of the kind of carb, you know, kind of sorry, the vegetables in his diet, which can improve the stool production. And apart from that, ensure that you're giving him lots of water frequently. And but if he's dull, inactive, and not eating, then I think he should think about some medical checkup. Sometimes it can be actually a constipation, which is causing the problem, or there could be other medical problem as well. But taking care of good hydration and giving him a good balanced diet, what is recommended by your veterinarian, I think can make the normal stool. So I think that two factors to be taken care of, but it's not normal one time if he's doing it. Okay. So uh, Ritik, I hope uh, that you heard that and you should take your puppy to the vet uh, as soon as possible. Uh, and hydration and balanced diet being the key uh, for better stools and better... Uh, uh, That's right. Uh, we have... Uh, an couple of more questions here. Uh, Pranav uh, says that um, he, he has a 1.5 year old golden retriever female named Calypso. Uh, interesting name. Uh, I have an issue with her ears. One ear is cleaned and don't have to clear it. But the second ear needs to be cleaned every alternate day uh, because it got filled with earwax, which has a foul smell. Is it normal or uh, is it some uh, grave issue? Please suggest. 
Yeah, so yeah, I can probably uh, kind of agree with the Bruno what he's saying because if one year probably which is kind of he's saying that there's more wax production and this is smelling as well. One possibility that this dog has actually atopic dermatitis in the sense this dog might have some other skin problem also which is associated and probably that also like his dog either he's biting his skin more and he has itching more or he keep biting his paws and other things so he should rule out if he has those kind of symptoms also then there is a high possibility that this dog actually has atopic dermatitis and which need a proper care and treatment actually there and because sometimes atopic dermatitis can lead to atopic otitis also and which is highly possible in golden river because these breeds are prone for that disease actually and second possibility if that this particular ear is getting infected and infected more then it's typically otitis externa then it means this ear canal is not getting cleaned as much it should be and there is infection staying inside and the best idea would be there is that he should take it to the doctor and the doctor probably should do a culture sensitivity taking a sample from deep inside to find out what bacteria it is and what antibiotic drops or something can help better so because this by doing this it can help uh, more uh, for treating that part sometimes they can have ear mites also and that also produce that black stuff and quite a bit of wax pore production happen animal keep itching and scratching and it's a simple test they just need to take that ear swab and just check under the paraffin mount under microscope they can just check it and sometimes ear mites also there and that need a different kind of treatment so i think here just alternate day cleaning is not the criteria you should diagnose what is causing it whether it's atopic dermatitis or it is a mites or it is an bacterial infection and i think he should visit to a doctor to get this checked because ear canal pain is very painful because we don't have ears uh, we don't have ear infections right now so we don't think too much but it's very painful conditions for an animal he should get it checked in my opinion okay so pranav i hope you heard that please get your uh, get calypso calypso checked uh, as soon as possible um we have a very relevant query uh, my 7 and 5 uh, so shivani says that her uh, 7 and 5 year old poms nails are long due for cutting uh, the lockdown and scare of covid uh, covid hasn't allowed us to go to the vet uh, they don't let me cut their nails and i even tried watching a youtube tutorial uh, is it safe to cut them uh, is it safe to take them to the vet now or should i just uh, cut them myself at home yeah i <laughs> yeah i think it's pretty fine it depend upon which city sees and how much kind of you know exposure is there but i probably advise if the nails are too long it's very very uncomfortable for an animal to walk and do that and he definitely feel psychologically very stressed with that part and please don't att attempt if you're not able to do it because you can lead to the bleeding and other thing it is best to take it to the uh, veterinarian or you can take it to the groomer if you have some nearby it's not that for this you need veterinarian only even some groomer can do that and some groomers they do house calls you can probably call them at home and they can do at home as well so i think i would advise you this particular case should be uh, taken care either to the veterinarian or groomer or by a house call actually that so better do it don't worry about the covid right now we have to probably take care of that part great so shivani that, that's right if you're hearing this uh, let us know your city of residence and uh, we can also probably help you out with uh, a house call uh for a groomer or you know a nearby vet where you can take your pet to um a lot more questions here uh garima says that uh, she has a 2 months old rottweiler what all should i feed him and what all should i avoid for the best of his growth uh he tries to eat everything but right now we only feed him starter food and dog serelac uh, also which dog food will be best for his growth in upcoming months okay so i think it's little more kind of generic questions and it's because he's only giving the starter food i think uh, from whichever company or whichever premium company she can give that is the best food what she can give right now and starter food can go very well till two uh, till three three and a half month of phase and uh, so till three months three and a half months she can give five four meals per day because i think right now if the road wild puppy being these are large breed dog and their growth is very fast actually so they should have high quality protein high quality of fat and much more carbohydrate and they need lots of nutrition like b complex and minerals and other thing so i think if you are going to make home food then uh, you know probably need to add you know every those component in by 
getting those in a different way. But if you have an access to starter food and you're only giving it, and if you can afford it, I think that would be the best food actually. That and right now I'll advise you because only you are giving the really good food. And if it is a starter, then till give three three and a half month and give four meals per day, uh, like in the gap of four to five hours, you can keep giving. And uh, because that can give a really good growth, and when he becomes three and a half month, then you can start any junior food, and or any growing food till fifteen or sixteen months you can give it, and when he becomes eighteen months of age, then you can give any adult food actually. And normally feeding timings till they become three months, we advise four times between three months to six months or seven months, three meals per day, and after seven months, if you are giving two times, it's more than enough, and that's how I'll advise you that. But which dog food is best? Uh, it's a quite a difficult question to answer that, but it more depend upon animal suitability and how good is accepted and are you getting the desired growth, coat and everything. I think the simple answer for you is his skin shining, is he otherwise comfortable, is his bones and everything looks okay. And if those are growing well, then I think the food what you are giving is the best. But if you feel still his skin is dry, he's not growing the way and the weight, what doctor has told you, because there is a growth pattern, you know, every two weeks or one month, how much growth he should achieve. But if he's not achieving it, then I think you need to change it. And Sarlac is not required. You can just start only the starter and water. So that should be enough. All right. So Garima, you're already on the right path. And uh, I hope you heard what Dr. Pawan had to say more about it. Um, uh, Dr. Pawan, there is uh, one uh, query regarding infection. Yes. So uh, Harpreet says that uh, his beagle has constant fungal infection in ears and mouth. I have done skin scraping and put my dog on antibiotics. He is fine till the time medicine is given, but the fungal infection starts again, I'm guessing, as soon as the medicine stops. So what do you have okay. to say? Yes, I think uh, uh, this one question Harpreet is asking, it looks like this case is again atopic dermatitis case. And this is probably around the mouth and around the ear, it is the problem. And I think some good doctor who has a knowledge of dermatology, he should be able to see that. And first thing she has mentioned that he has a constant fungal infection. If it is confirmed by doing some test, then I can agree with that part. But otherwise, he should confirm it. Actually, it is a fungal infection or not. And it's a quite a simple test to do it. They can take a lactophenol tape and they can doctor can check it. Because fungal infection can be yeast infection, and which is the most common, like malassezia which is quite common. And you can diagnose by one simple test through the mouth or from the ear, wherever it is. If that test is positive, then she should keep this dog on not only antibiotics, she should keep this dog on antifungal. And antifungal should be given for almost six to eight weeks. Then only you can clear that infection. And I think she should always give omega fatty acid to this dog regularly because that act as a natural anti-inflammatory for the skin problems. So there are so many omega fatty acid or commonly like olive oil, coconut oil or sunflower oil can be used. But in this case, I think this case, case looks to me could be either uh, kind of allergic dermatitis because of atopy or it could be mites. If the skin scraping is negative, then she should get it diagnosed by doing a fungal uh, testing actually that and if it is confirmed then she should start with antifungal uh, but it needs some clear more diagnosis in this case and omega fatty acid is is a very serious advice it's really going to help her this case particularly all right okay hi Preet. i hope you heard the answer to your query um in case you have a follow-up question uh you can uh, post it in the comment as a query for audience who's joining us now uh dr pawan is answering queries on uh pets health and wellness and if you have a question regarding your pets health and wellness please post it as a comment uh in the comment below uh so you know talking about infections dr pawan infections in pets is one of the major concern for pet parents uh, you know, what are the different kinds of uh, infections that uh, a pet is prone to, whether it's related to skin or ears or eyes and, you know, uh, obviously other uh, parts of the body. Um, you know, what are these different kinds of infections and what are the signs that uh, a pet parent should be looking out for, uh, whether it's that infection or not? Okay. I think it's a, it's a quite a big thing to tell about infections because it opens up really big chapter. There are so many kind of infections that are possible. Like they can have, when I'm talking about the puppies, they have different kind of infections. Then growing can have different kind of infections. An adult and senior has different dog and cat can have different. But in general, it has been seen that cats are more prone for viral infection. And viral infections are more 
prominent in cats and kittens and like calci virus is there herpes virus is there feline pandukupenia which you call it is parovirus in cat coronavirus is also there which is another like which can bring feline infectious peritonitis and all those are common and uh, for some of them there are vaccinations available that can be done and uh, apart from that cat also have quite a commonly encountered infection like dermatophytosis which is a fungal infection on their skin and the cat can have other is urinary tract infections are quite common so that can happen because of bacteria and uh, lots of bacteria like e coli or those can or staphylococcus and all those can cause uh, so that's another things which happens in the cat when we talk about the dogs i think you all heard about parovirus can and distemper feline par para influenza or infectious can and hepatitis so these all kind of viral infections which are very very serious this normally affect more young population but these are quite serious there's another bacteria which commonly affect is leptospirosis and which is really very serious which can affect the kidney liver and all those diseases it can bring apart from that other infections are there like tick borne infections uh, which can cause because of tick fever we commonly encounter so there are four five type of parasites are there one of them we call it is babesiosis anaplasmosis or uh, there's another comes like the ehrlichiosis so these are three four parasites are there which are very serious and this can come these infections can come from the ticks actually uh, then other bacterial infection like salmonella e coli and even eyes what you're talking about these all can happens to the eyes also and uh, plus skin infections like streptococcus or staphylococcus bacteria which can bring the skin infections the dermatitis and all those diseases can come so it's a really long list to convey that but yes lots of infection bacteria virus and fungi yeah all technical terms just went over my head but like uh, you know in just uh, like are there any signs like common signs that these infections have that uh, if pet parents are noticing in their pets so you know they they should look out for like particular so signs so i can tell you the most common disease which probably kind of is affecting for those i can tell you and uh, so probably if i like parovirus is there so that this happens more with the young populations they will start with vomiting then foul smelling diarrhea and uh, not eating dullness weakness and then diarrhea is a typical smell which will be very foul smelling diarrhea uh, then about infectious can and hepatitis animal will become dull feverish sometime eyes start becoming blue actually in those so that's infectious can and hepatitis then can and distemper uh, which is can be it can they can start having discharge from the nose coughing sneezing uh, eye discharge and that's a very highly fatal disease sometimes they start getting fits or seizures also so that's another disease which can be then apart from that leptospirosis which normally brings vomiting and dullness and fever and all those kind of sign and that can be really very serious because it can lead to kidney failure liver failure and all those when we talk about the cats uh, so like a common viral disease when we talk about feline pandukupenia virus it is exactly like parovirus in, in dogs they will have vomiting and diarrhea and very foul smelling diarrhea can come that is in cats so feline parovirus we call it is apart from that <clears throat> rhinotracheitis virus they start sneezing and coughing and the discharge come from the nose so that's again a viral infection calci virus is another things where they can start getting ulcers in the mouth and uh, discharge from the mouth more saliva and all those thing comes animal become the dull fever and other thing comes mycoplasma is another common in cats which happens where they become anemic they start signs showing the sign of jaundice also and that's other infection which is quite common and one very very serious infections it comes in the cat we call it is fib feline infectious peritonitis they start stomach start bulging up lots of fluid accumulate this is a kind of coronavirus for the cats which can cause it actually so these are like common disease which i can probably tell you and this is how the symptom comes and if it helps to them right very informative dr pawan uh, we'll start uh, with taking more questions uh, shivani says that is there any tiny dry itchy patch or general dryness uh, if if there is uh, that uh, can we apply a little coconut oil i have four palms and even the front flap the ears are also dry and flaky uh, she was asking if she can apply coconut oil to such dry patches yeah so that's if they have tiny patches of itching so there are lots of uh there are some many spray are available actually you can get which has 
uh, which can be used. Apart from that, there are some kind of solutions comes with the name. So many commercially available are there, Pomisol, no, sorry, Kiskin, Wakazol, and all those kind of companies which makes which locally can be applied. But do remember these do have sometimes local steroid as, as well. But always better that a doctor advise that part. And uh, but the simple thing, if it's, it's a mild itchy patch, coconut oil is a really good option. They can definitely use it and not to worry too much for that part. Coconut oil actually it protects from the environment, so much dust and other thing doesn't fall. And apart from that, it acts as an emollient actually, soothes the skin in that area, and it can be used for the dry, flaky skin. And I probably will advise you that if it's possible, so you can use uh, coconut oil for oil massage once in four to five weeks. So you can apply the oil like a scalp massage, uh, gently, so you can do it, not without rubbing too much, and then keep that oil for almost one hour and then give a good shampoo bath. It really helps to improve the sebaceous and oil secretion of uh, skin and which helps to kind of rejuvenate the skin. So that's something definitely you can do that. All right. Okay. Um, Kavya has uh, another question. She asked uh, about her golden retriever who's four years. Uh, I want to know about how to take care of the coat and he has curly fur. Is it fine? Okay. So I think it's normal because in golden retriever curly fur is very normal. I think they uh that's pretty normal like human so because they have straight hair curly hair i don't think so any straightening parlor is there for the dog so far <laughs> but that's fine i think they need more brushing and uh, how to take care of the coat being seen as a golden retriever so for this breed golden retriever particularly uh grooming becomes very very important part of their health and skin plays very integral part so and probably kavya has to remember that skin is the largest organ of the body and uh, taking care of the skin becomes very important job actually and particularly in golden fever so first thing is how to take care of the skin is or coat is which is the cheapest method is brushing every day and which is very important by doing the brushing once he removes the dead hair if there are one or two ticks or fleas also there that comes out plus animals kind of skin why like it vibes better and there's a good ventilation happens and if there are some simple nodes or dirt or that kind of thing, it comes out. And of course, animal like it because it is, it kind of improves the circulation of the skin. So animal like it. So doing a good brushing, I think, is more important than anything else. Second thing about the skin, you can do it. Uh, it's always kind of consult a veterinarian, which could be the best diet possible, and a diet which is uh, kind of rich in kind of certain supplements like omega fatty acid, zinc or vitamins and that kind of diet should be supplied. So that I think the veterinarian can be the best persons to guide you according to requirement. And in general, it is always better that she should give some extra omega fatty acid always to keep the skin glowing and healthy and unnecessary infection should not come. And apart from that, uh, for the coat, I'll advise, as I mentioned to you, once in four to five weeks, if she can give you an oil massage that actually help for the skin and coat to improve the uh, sebaceous and oil gland secretions. So that's another things can be done. So that's so something much, I would do. Yeah. Yeah. So much like humans, uh, oil chumpy is good for dogs as well. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Um, we have another question from Garima. Uh, she says that uh, her cat gave birth to four kittens almost a month ago, but they're still feeding on mother's milk and do not drink normal milk. Their belly looks really heavy and bloated and their limbs and Trolls are comparatively very thin, which makes it difficult for them to even walk. Yes, yeah, so yeah, sorry. So it's like continue. Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah. So so one thing is if they are like four kittens and they kind of almost one month of phase. So first thing is rather than giving the normal milk, she should focus on some kind of other healthy food because ideally the milk what we are giving it and we are drinking it is not a really good great food for the cats and kittens because kittens the requirement of nutrition is very high and the milk what we use normally is very very nutritional deficient for the kitten because their requirement of protein carbohydrate and fat everything is very high so i think the first thing we shall advise that better kind of have some other food available which are like commercially available which are kitten food or again growing uh, baby food like those kind of things for the puppies and other things also can be used but they are specifically available available for the kittens which can be used and otherwise maybe even the 
kitten food available which are wet food are they like those pouches and other thing comes those are better nutrition than anything else uh, but it is absolutely okay if if it is a one month old and they are still suckling but slowly slowly she can start separating them and start giving some wet food rather than milk and other thing i think there is another very important reason because they are habitual of suckling from the mother and so she has to teach them how to eat the food and they might take some time to learn that part so in the sense bring the food close to the mouth and keep it for some time so they will still suckle it but after some time they'll start swallowing swell like they'll start taking it inside and there's a time will come after two days or three days that they will start swallowing it very well and then she can bring a habit of giving these old wet food or maybe those food which are available for kitten but milk i will advise you not to give and if they have a bloated stomach and heavy like little more kind of uh, a large stomach then there could be worms possible so better she should get it them deworms there can be high possibility that they are all have worms because they keep licking the floor and they can get worms quite often and the worms keep eating the nutritions and they don't get anything in bargain okay um yeah. moving on uh, tanvi says that her 7 year old labrador has stopped talking playing or responding um he also has a lot of pain in his lungs uh, limbs that is um so what do you suggest okay so tanvi in case you have a labrador and he stopped playing and if he is not responding and his reflexes are going down a labrador is not in that kind of breed they will stop playing because their life is only to play and eat only two things they believe and if he is not doing that please understand there is something serious going on and your boy is is definitely in lots of pain and i think if his hind limb is showing pain it is not some pain it is definitely very severe pain so i would suggest you that he should get a x ray done or an orthopedic exam done or a hip x ray or doctor whatever he suggests and you should focus on some good treatment for them he could have hip dysplasia he could have osteoarthritis or it could be some ligament tear or something so i would suggest you that if the labrador is not interested in playing keep in mind it's something serious it's better to rule out properly and diagnose because they don't complain too much they will just keep sitting and they keep kind of eating from their own day so better to get it checked properly for that okay okay um okay this uh, following question is uh more towards your entrepreneur side i think uh ak mittal is asking that why don't industry uh, why doesn't industry make it mandatory for all pet grooming places to have vet on their board are there any issues okay have- so <laughs> okay it's a it's a good question so what what uh, mr mittal is asking that actually uh it is like first thing is in veterinary industry really there is not great laws and regulations and other things by already existing so there are lots of other important things are there i think if you can make protocols for those those would be much more helpful like making the breeding more organized and license based and uh, then you talk about the grooming part which you're talking about having a veterinarian on the board uh, it's a good thing because they can kind of veterinarian can definitely just lots of uh kind of skin problems and other thing and they can advise better but it's basically uh it is more it's a people's preference actually so they can go to the individual groomers or they can go to those groomers which has a veterinarian also but there's nothing like any issues that they can't stop it or something veterinarian can definitely join and they can work together and it's not a problem at all but it is more of i think their personal interest in other things but it can be very well done <coughs> um nikki asks that uh, her male golden retriever dog uh because of the lockdown doesn't uh, is not able to exercise much and he is barking at every dog which is very embarrassing for her so yeah so first thing is i am i'm a little thinking that you know he there's no reason that you can't take your dog for walk so because whether it's a lockdown or something first thing is Uh, if you have to remind in your brain that it's a lockdown and you can't take your dog for walk it is wrong you can definitely take your dog for walk and it is very important and no one is stopping you to do that part neither officials are stopping you to do that part and it is absolutely mandatory because they need kind of exercise and walking and other thing ha uh, yes you can cannot take them for swimming you cannot take them in park and other thing but you can take them early morning or you can take them late night when there is less people are on the road 
but please kind of take them for a walk and take them for really good walk actually that is one thing we said advice because you have a golden retriever and he need to burn his calorie we need to probably think from their perspective right now you are watching video you are watching youtube you are watching netflix and everything and you are entertaining yourself but really there is nothing for them actually so they need to be kind of stressful for that part so either you should have some really good toys uh, which are like kong toys or whatever those kind of which are really can keep them busy and have a good playing time if you are most of the time at home then spend really good time to play with them leaving them just without any attention is not a good solution so should take them for a walk regularly and for a long walk apart from that have some kind of really good uh, toys which can improve their mental enrichment so we need to realize the way we need by watching movies or watching video or songs we enrich our mental status similarly dog also need a mental enrichment by playing by exercising so they need to burn their calorie actually so i think uh, you need to produce find the kind of time out where you can take them but take them for a walk uh, yeah i agree certain things you can't do it but playing at home is is something no one stops you can definitely do lots of things at home and there's so many methods on internet and youtube you can get it where you can make your dog engaged and mentally enriched actually and i think those can really help you make sure that okay um also so uh, there is one more question here uh, which uh, i would also like to add on that question so uh, garima is asking that you know when should i start giving a uh, bath to my puppy uh, at what age uh, because i am afraid that he might catch cold and fall sick and this is actually a very a uh, very very common query that uh, you know people keep asking that uh, pet parents ask that you know how often how frequently should we bathe our pets and if there should be a bathing schedule uh or for their pets and uh, you know like uh, what is the necessity uh, of uh, that bathing schedule so uh, can you throw some light on that doctor yeah so i think exactly what you are saying it's a really kind of common questions which is asked during the practice as well so first thing is like uh, we normally advise whether it's a dog or a cat uh, you can start giving them bath after 3 3 and 1/2 month of age uh, before that uh, what i can probably advise you that you give them kind of brushing which is the simple for dog because they don't have sweat gland and cat they don't have sweat gland so they don't need bath too often but they need brushing very often because they their hair keep shedding and they have lots of matting so brushing is very important which you can start from the the day when you get puppy and that keeps the puppy clean second thing is there are so so many commercially available wipes are there like wet wipes are there which are like you in case the puppy is dirty or something you can use those wet wipes and you can clean him off with those wet wipes and apart from that there are some kind of dry spray available actually in the company so many company which you can just spray like dry bath you can spray it massage it and it will basically animal clean the animals but i think brushing using the pet wipes or using the dry spray or dry bath those can be used but bath ideally you should start after the age of 3 3 and 1/2 month of age and you can there are so many commercially available puppy shampoos are there with the like proper optimum ph please don't use human shampoo because those has a different ph it will dry the skin quite a bit so puppy shampoo or those can be used leave the shampoo like on the body ensure that puppy doesn't lick the shampoo apply the shampoo every part of the body scrub it use lukewarm water and leave the shampoo for 2 to 5 minutes and then wash him thoroughly with the lukewarm water dry him with the towel you can use the even dryer also but gently with the low speed you can use and dry and brush them actually that so these are the some basic kind of uh, things about the grooming which i can suggest you that okay um one more interesting question by archana uh, she says that uh, she has a 6 year old female english cocker spaniel uh, she has not gone through the mating process yet uh, we wanted to get her spayed is it okay to get this uh, get her, get her spayed at this age and is it mandatory for all female dogs okay so come uh, probably ideally in case you are thinking about the spaying you should have done when she was 7 or 8 months of age before she came into the first heat uh, so when we why we advise about spaying or something so there's two concepts are there either so there's two things are there either you should mate your dog regularly like once they become 15 or 18 months of age that every year you should mate them till 6 6 and 1/2 year of age let them have litter let them have that kind of normal physiological thing and that is the best thing which you can do it but in case you have not mated your dog for 6 years and now probably you have very less limitations to spay her uh, 
there are two reasons we advise spaying if you are not mated the dog regularly and if you are not spayed her also so they have a very high tendency to develop two problems in fact many problems but two are most important with some training one of them is mammary cancer and second is uterus infection like pyometra and third which can happen is kind of ovarian cancer or ovarian tumor also because these are hormone based problems and they can develop hormonal cancer actually that uh by doing the spaying on the mammary tumor at this age you'll be able to save up to some extent that the tumor doesn't come but you will get less benefit of this process right now as compared to what you could have got it when you would have done early years normally you advise please spay them before the first heat itself because you can protect the animal by spaying at early age mammary tumor almost 95% it can be protected and they will not get mammary tumor but after 6 years there will be chances of getting mammary tumor but it will if you spare them it will competitively less but the next thing which is very important if you are not mated your dog there is a high possibility this dog can have uh, a uterus infection in pyometra by spaying it you can definitely protect that this kind of infection should not come to the animal i think that benefit you will get it but it's not mandatory uh, it is more of choice actually but it's a clinical recommendation that you should do the dog spaying when they are at a lee is possible that's something i can comment here okay all right uh, so in terms of so uh, like you said that um, the, is it true that there are two things that you can do that either you uh, regularly get your uh, dog mated or that, you get spayed right that's right either or basically yeah and, uh, is is one process better than the other is it better that we follow the mating process or is it better that we follow the spaying process yeah if you can do the best for uh, best solution with it that you should mate a dog after the mat- sexual maturity every year you mate the dog keep you know let them litter and everything every year and when they become 6 and a half year of age then you get them spayed that's the okay. best thing that's the best thing okay and uh, you know for new pet parents especially who have not housed a pet before uh, how do we identify uh, if uh, the pet's heat cycle has begun and you know what is the normalcy of a pet's heat cycle okay so normally the heat cycle in female dog it start at the age of uh, in smaller breed like pug another thing it can start early also but in certain breed it started so from 6 months to 9 month any time it can start so this different breed has different but normally you can say an average 7 7 1/2 month that period starts and it can last you know kind of between 2 to 3 weeks and uh, during this time they will always have some kind of bleeding like no, some can have more bleeding some can have less bleeding like every 3 4 hours you know some few drops of blood is just falling actually and uh, owners you know kind of definitely cannot miss that part because they'll find that there is some blood drops drops are falling from the vaginal area and there is some swelling in the vaginal area as well and of course animal sometimes becomes a little sedentary and kind of little isolated also and these are the symptoms they can find it out actually for that okay so since we're talking about spaying and uh, neutering right now we have a question by pranav that uh, He says that please suggest I want to neuter my golden retriever, 1.4 year female, but my friend who owns Labra is stopping me as her previous Labra died due to cancer after neuter. He is saying if really you want to spay her, do it, but just after one litter delivery. What what is your entire take on this question, doctor? Okay, so first thing is like the dog, which probably he's thinking about, which died because of neutering or something. so neutering as such doesn't increase any kind of cancer thing actually that the dog might have some kind of tumor so but that may be a different origin any dog can have a tumor right. but uh, neutering prevent certain so neutering actually help to prevent certain cancers like one of them is prostate cancer perineal hernia and perineal cancer which are quite common with related cancers so right. that is uh yeah, and he is telling that do it after the one delivery so either it is not like it is more of is that human psychological satisfaction that if you do one uh, kind of time mating and one delivery will happen so the animal will feel better but it's clinically not like that actually either he should just if he's thinking about spaying then better do it as early as possible otherwise keep mating her every year until she becomes 6 and 1/2 year of age and then he can get her spayed but there is nothing like going to get any benefit of one time mating and then getting her spayed so it is more psychological 
thinking what they are uh, thinking from their own perspective, but otherwise is not going to get any kind of great benefit by doing that. Okay, uh, so uh, Dimpi has um, an interesting question. She asks that which treatment is best to treat uh, uh, atopic dermatitis, uh, allopathy, holistic Ayurveda, or homeopathy? Okay, <laughs> okay, so. Uh, Dimpi, the question what you're asking, because I'm from a more from allopathy background, so I can't answer you that questions. Uh, but I think the word what you used, holistic, I think that really is a better answer. Uh, if your dog has been diagnosed with atopy, and I probably will advise you that if you have a choice of giving homeopathy, and if your dog is responding with the homeopathy, then it's the best solution. If your dog is responding with Ayurveda, you should try it out. If there is, it is animal is responding with that, then I think that's the best actually. That, but if animal is not responding, you try homeopathy, try Ayurveda. If it doesn't respond, try for at least a couple of months. If the condition is worsening, then it is better that you think about holistic approach, which is giving some good omega fatty acid. And atopic dermatitis also has a different level of problems. Some dogs. They get atopic dermatitis, but they get problems once in eight months or nine months. Like they get itching, scratching, redness. If that kind of case, those are mild cases. You know, whenever the problem happens, then treat. Give the injection or give the medications and then treat and then disappear. If the problem is happening once in eight months or nine months, then better as well. Don't try too much. Then whenever the problem comes, treat and the problem is over. But some cases can be moderate to severe. For those cases, you will need treatment more often or regularly actually. For those cases, I think you should find out what actually is causing the atopic dermatitis. Because for this, there is a test is done, serum allergy test. You can find out what is actually causing the allergy and what food should be kind of separated or isolated from the normal regime and what are the factors which is causing. Because this is one test which can tell you about what factors are kind of to be isolated. And, uh, you know, I think. In this case, it is quite difficult to answer which treatment will be the best. But I think she can try the less harmful ways first. That is Ayurveda or homeopathy. If it doesn't work, then she can think about that part. And if it is a really mild case, then don't worry too much. If it is happening once in eight months or nine months, then treat it only when the pollen comes. And then the rest, we can tackle it. Okay. Uh, we'll take a couple of questions more, Dr. Pavan. Um, we are, uh, you know, also uh, running out of time. Uh, here is Kulneet asking uh, that her dog is seven months and she doesn't bark at all. It's a Shih Tzu. Um, okay, so that's normal. Many dogs don't bark. And that's very normal thing. It can be, so you don't need to worry for that part. You don't need to kind of... Uh, make a tag that you know your dog is not barking so your dog is silent but many dogs can be like that similarly many male dogs they don't lift the leg and they don't urinate so that's a normal thing so that is something is not uh, abnormal or not like a pathological so you don't need to worry as long as she's active she's uh, hearing you listening you she's able to see and her other old reflexes are working well so then barking is just a sign which is just not doing it and it's normal in some dogs they don't do it but as long as she's listening and hearing, and then I think it's normal. But if she's not, then I think you should get it checked that she should not be deaf. So that's something I'd request because she's just not hearing at all. But that is something you should get it checked by a doctor first. Right. Okay. So not barking is not uh, abnormal also. Absolutely. Uh, interesting. Uh, there is one question uh, that, uh, good evening, I have a pug who is 2.5 years. His corona vaccine was due on 22nd April. It's been a month now. What is the latest it can be extended to? And this is actually a common query, doctor, because uh, because of the lockdown and, you know, initial one, one and a half months, the vet clinics were also closed for a while. So a lot of pet parents uh, know, knew that, you know, there were vaccinations due for their pets and they were just not, they didn't have access to it. So now that eventually the lockdown lifts, um, you know, what is it, is it, it, was it okay to miss those vaccines and is it okay to take them now and, you know, how to go through this entire process? Yeah, so I think I'll probably put it because he's a two and a half years old dog approximately. So she don't need to worry. She can wait for one or two months more also. There's not to worry because vaccine still has immunity for decent time. If the dog has been vaccinated properly and with the 
proper cold chain vaccine. So she don't need to worry for that part. She can wait for maybe another two weeks or three weeks also. And if that area that, you know, otherwise veterinary centers are open, then she can get it vaccinated as well. And a Corona virus is normally more happens with the young puppies and she don't need to worry. This is not a very mandatory vaccine as well for the uh, puppies. Actually. Now for the dogs, puppies, yes, we advise that. But uh, she can definitely wait for another one month or two months also. And if the dog is otherwise fairly healthy and everything is okay, then there's not too much to worry. And she can wait for some more time. Because I think almost one month delayed sees, but till two months, three months, don't worry too much. So that's something I will advise you. Uh, but if it is a puppy is there, if this is happening with the adult dog, adult dog, you can wait for a few months if they've been regularly vaccinated before. But if it is the puppy, please vaccinate them the, as the time has been given because for them, immunity is not there. They need to be vaccinated because they can get disease. So for them, it is very important that you should take it as a priority and get it vaccinated and don't delay their vaccinations. But for adult, it is okay. You can delay it. Okay. All right. So, uh, you know, let's just take uh, last three questions for the session. Um, we have, you know, uh, Vipul asking, uh, I have a golden retriever about one year age and have seen leg bending and hinge back leg. We are giving him uh, were back calcium and uh, minerals, tables or paws up or mega flex powder for his joint and ligaments. Is it okay or what, you suge what do you suggest on this issue? Yeah, so if it's a golden retriever and if he has a leg bending in hinge, means I think on the uh, hock joint, what he's taking in the back leg. I think in this case, what supplement his medication is giving is more for the joints actually. But this dog need more serious diagnosis. This can be case of osteochondrosis or this can be case of hip dysplasia. I think that these are like medicines, like just like suggested and supplement. But in this case, need a diagnosis, people. In my opinion, uh, if some doctor who has a good knowledge of orthopedic, then I think I would request you that you should get a good orthopedic exam done and you should diagnose the actual condition, what is causing it. It can be osteochondrosis of hog joint, which is possible in the golden retriever. And second, it can be hip dysplasia as well. So I think a good orthopedic exam or hip x-ray or a kind of hook x-ray, it can tell you that. And once you're confirmed, then take actions accordingly, actually, because these are general supplements. These are not going to cure him, actually. These are just like keeping the joint a little more stable, but it's not the cure. The primary diagnosis is most important here, and that's something I would suggest to you. Okay, um, Dimpi asks, uh, my dog scoots even after clearing his anus by wet. And, uh, you know, a continuation to this is that, uh, you know, a lot of pa pet parents uh, struggle with the fact that, uh, you know, even when they keep their pets clean, uh, you know, they catch them, uh, catch their pets licking their private parts a lot or, you know, uh, in that manner also. So, uh, you know, what do you think is uh, wrong and how can it be stopped? Okay, so if the dog is scooting even after that they clean the anal sac, there can be a couple of reasons for that part. One is that that anal sac, which they are cleaned it actually, so that has some kind of infection and anal saculitis. So, and which need a separate proper way of treatment actually, that, that is one possibility. Second reason for this can be that anal sac has been cleaned, but it has not been cleaned completely actually. So that's another reason can be possible. And third, very common reason which happens with the dog, sometimes they have atopic dermatitis because of food. And when they eat particular food which is causing allergy, and when they poop out that food actually, and that always brings some allergic reaction to that area, and that always has some degree of redness. So to counter that part, they start basically scooting. So sometimes it may not be an anal sac problem actually, which they are thinking so. It could be actually atopic dermatitis or atopic allergic dermatitis caused because of food allergy and which is actually making him itch there and that's the reason he's pooping and scooting actually that you know so that part i think he need a kind of little more exam from your doctor and he can tell you that but these three conditions can be possible one infection of anal sac which is causing second incomplete cleaning of anal sac and third reason it can be atopic dermatitis of anal area and because of that Actually, anal sac is not the problem. The problem is allergy, and which is causing him to scoot more. 
So that's something I can suggest here. Okay. Uh, we also spoke about parovirus. Uh, that's how we pronounce it, right? Parovirus. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, uh, Garima is asking if there's a vaccine for parovirus and at what age should it be given to the puppy? Yeah, so there is a vaccine for parovirus. Most of the vaccines, and this is very commonly available. Uh, for parovirus, the vaccine can be started after five weeks of age. and uh, But normally when we give all combined vaccine after six weeks of age, that time normally everyone starts. But it can be started even after five weeks of age, actually. that, And then you need to be given in the gap of three weeks or four weeks until three or four doses as a booster is required and then after that every year they can vaccinate okay uh, we have khyati she's asking uh, that uh, you know her shih tzu who is one and a half years old is scratching and biting a lot uh, he got rashes all over the body as per vet i gave him set sip and betadine still is biting and scratching should i continue giving him that medication or is there anything else that you suggest Okay, so first thing is if the veterinarian has advised you the medication, it is better to continue that because he must have examined and he must be knowing that what best to do in this regard. But my suggestion would be there if he's scratching and biting a lot and if he has rest is all over. Again, here the primary diagnosis is the most important. Why he's scratching? This can be again mites, which is possible because you have an adult dog. So sarcoptis mites, which is possible, you can rule out by skin scraping. It can be a fungal infection, which you need to rule out again by skin scraping or by that leptophenol test. And third reason, it can be atopic dermatitis, again, which we have talked, we have spoken many times about that. So if that is the condition, then he need a proper care and proper uh, kind of planning for that part, because this problem can be a reoccurring problem. It can heal once and again come back. So I think, and this can be a long problem and it can be a lifelong problem. So it is better to get a primary diagnosis done if it is atopic dermatitis and if he has a scratching and all over rashes, he need a very serious treatment. And, but I think I, I will not be able to advise you the treatment unless until we are confirmed on that part. And uh, sometimes we can advise you the serum allergy test to confirm or even a veterinarian dermatology uh, knowledge person can check and he can guide you for that part. Right. Okay. So it looks like uh, our time is up now, Dr. Pawan. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, and, uh, you know, thank you for joining us and helping us out and, uh, you know, in giving the most expert uh, opinions and suggestions to everybody who asked their questions. Uh, thanks a lot, sir. And uh, thank you, pet parents, for, uh, you know, joining us. And I hope the ones who asked uh, their questions, their queries got answered and, uh, you know, we could we were able to help you in some way. Uh, to the ones who missed it, don't worry, we'll have uh, such uh, regular sessions. Uh, live sessions with experts uh, on a daily basis uh, regarding different topics every day now. So, uh, you know, uh, we'll be back with more such sessions. Uh, meanwhile, you can uh, check out this video on our YouTube and Facebook channel in the video section. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Bowen, once again for uh, giving us your precious time. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much for and thank you so much for giving time here. Thank you. Welcome, sir.